Okay, so training using the anaerobic threshold method. Awesome, awesome method, guys. Doesn't matter who you are, whether you're a runner, a swimmer, a combat athlete, team sport athlete, everybody or every type of athlete, in my opinion, should use this threshold method at some point within their training. The reason being is this method sort of expands the reach of your aerobic system, so your sustainable energy source. Um, and obviously what you want to do is widen the reach of that so you can essentially push back fatigue. The anaerobic threshold is essentially the point at which your aerobic system can no longer provide you with the total amount of energy required for the activity. What happens then is your body starts to uh, call upon the more fatigue heavy anaerobic systems to sort of supplement the energy demand and, uh, and obviously the point at which you start to fatigue. So yeah, so once, you, once your aerobic system is breached and once you sort of surpass your threshold, you will start to fatigue and obviously fatigue will creep in, uh, upon you. That is the reality. So if we can actually push that, this sort of anaerobic threshold back and expand the reach of your sustainable energy source, your sports performance will go like that and your rate of fatigue will go like that. So it doesn't take a genius to work out that the athlete that can do that is the one that's gonna be able to perform the longest, the hardest and the best. So. How do we train it? Well, first and foremost, you, to be able to train it, you need to know what it is or what point at which you reach it. So the most practical method of finding it is something called a 12 minute Cooper run test. Now, the idea of this test is quite simple. You've got 12 minutes to run as far as you possibly can whilst recording factors such as distance, average heart rate and average pace. And it's those last two, the average heart rate and your average pace that give you a really reliable guide to what your threshold is. So if you're a runner and you like to work with pace, obviously the key factor there is what was your average pace over the 12 minutes? Or if you're somebody who likes to work with heart rate, what was my heart rate over those 12 minutes? And obviously if you like to work with both, then you can use both. So for example then, uh, say, uh, we'll use an example, we'll use myself as a theoretical example. Okay, I covered 3.2 kilometers in 12 minutes and I had an average heart rate of 173 and my average pace, I know this is not going to correlate up, was something like 14.2 kilometers per hour. So the, my power output is represented by the distance. My average, my anaerobic threshold in heart rate would be 173 beats per minute. And my average pace it obviously would form my, thresh, my pace at threshold would be 14.2 kilometers per hour. Now that's my sort of baseline figure. This is what I now need to, I can train with this and I want to improve upon this. So in theory, if I was to go for a period of training and I was gonna repeat test down the line, I would want my distance to go up, my average heart, my power at that heart rate to stay the same or go up, and my speed, I definitely want to go up. So you want all of these three factors in theory to improve. But obviously the key is, yeah, I want my power output at my thresholds to go up. Now, okay, so that's great. So I now know what my threshold is and I now know what I want to do with it, i.e. drive it up. So how do I do that? Okay, well, it's quite simple really. If you're gonna pick the heart rate method, you need to run for um, periods or intervals using plus or minus five beats per minute of that figure. So if I'm gonna go for, for example, I'm gonna do four by eight minute runs at my threshold. My threshold, I want to be sort of in and around 173 beats per minute, but I can be minus five beats per minute or I can be over by five beats per minute. And obviously it's gonna fluctuate, okay? But for the duration of those eight minutes, I need to be there or thereabouts so that I can put the stimulus upon my body to say, hey, I need to improve on this. I need to get better at this. And obviously your body can then do that. Okay, and obviously if I want to, uh, if I'm a runner and I want to use pace, then I will go, I will, instead of looking at my heart rate, I would look at my pace over those eight minutes and I wanna be in and around 14.2 kilometers per hour. And obviously over time, what you would obviously expect is your body to adapt and improve and your threshold to go up. And obviously you can run faster and faster and faster. Or if you're using bag work as a boxer, you'll probably notice that your punch volume or your intensity is able to start creeping up a little bit before you start to fatigue. And that's all you're doing with this method, guys, is you're driving that point up. You're driving that threshold up. And that means that you can work or your relationship with oxygen is improved. Your power output is improved you're now having to call upon those fatigue heavy systems less and obviously your performance then goes up. So if you're a runner, that would mean obviously you can push the pace for longer. If you're a fighter, you can push the pace of your opponent for, uh, for longer and obviously drown them in their own conditioning, hopefully. So that is the threshold method, guys. Um, in terms of typical sets and rest, 
uh, anywhere as a good starting point, you want anywhere between sort of 25 and 30 total working minutes. So that could be sort of four by eight minutes. It could be three by 10 minutes. It could be five by five minutes, six by five minutes, anything like that, where you're getting in and around 25, 30 minutes of total work. And obviously your rest periods, you want a sort of an active recovery period. So if you're running, just choose some gentle walking uh, where you're bringing your heart rate back down to around about 120, 130 beats per minute. Uh, and anywhere sort of two to three minute rest intervals is a good start. So uh, that is the threshold method. One thing I haven't talked about obviously is how to find your threshold if you haven't got time or you don't want to do a Cooper run test. You can simply use a formula. If you're a really well trained individual, you can work, out, work it out using about 85 to 90% of your uh, max heart rate. If you're pretty out of shape, you can drop it down to 80 to 75%. If you're way, way out of shape, it can be as low as 65 or 70%. And that's the problem with these formulas is it's like they're kind of, they're, they provide a guesswork only or a guesstimate only. Really get after that Cooper run test or if you're really flush for money or, you want, or you're really looking for a gold standard um, uh, caliber of test, use something called a CPET test, which is called a cardio pulmonary exercise test. But uh, yeah, threshold method, really, really useful for every single athlete out there, guys. And uh, you're gonna see a quick video of some examples now.